Hi, my name is Sarah Morris and I'm a PhD student in physics at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. So, every year around the world about half a million people suffer a spinal cord injury, the majority of which occur due to trauma to the cord from things like violence, car accidents or falls. The tissue damage from these impacts is complex and every injury is different and so it can be hard for doctors to predict which patients will regain function and which will have a permanent disability. Before we go further, we should talk about the spinal cord. Your spinal cord is about the width of your pinky finger and if you were to cut a cross section of a human spinal cord, it looks like this. In the middle is grey matter which is shaped a bit like a butterfly and surrounding it is white matter. The white matter is composed of nerve fibres, which carry signals from the brain to the body and back again. Surrounding each fibre is myelin, shown in green here, which is a protective, insulating layer of fatty tissue. Myelin is gradually lost after a spinal cord injury, as the tissue breaks down, and this can contribute to disability. If we could image this myelin loss in the cord over time, it would be very valuable for clinical trials to track whether new treatments for spinal cord injury are working, and it might help us predict what level of recovery is possible for individual patients. Here is a standard MRI of a spinal cord injury, and you might be able to see a faintly brighter region which extends from the point of the injury up and down the cord. This brightness is definitely tissue damage, but it could be caused by many things. Both loss of myelin and, for example, more water in the tissue look bright on this kind of standard MRI scan. So we need a scan which is more specific. Luckily, MRI is versatile and researchers have developed new advanced scans which can measure myelin. But before we can use these to investigate spinal cord injury, we need to check whether they're really measuring what we think they're measuring. This is a very important step, and to do it, we need to compare our MRI images with a gold standard map of where the myelin is. So what did we actually do? We used our myelin MRI techniques to scan spinal cords donated by people who had died of a spinal cord injury. And we obtained images like this. This image was obtained using a technique called inhomogeneous magnetization transfer. You can kind of see the grey matter butterfly in the middle here. Then we took the same cords and cut very thin slices of tissue, which we stained with a special dye that attaches to myelin. We took pictures of the stain maps under a microscope, which looked like this. And then we compared them in different areas. I found the areas of high myelin measured by our MRI scans, and the bright areas of the myelin staining map matched very well. Ultimately, we believe advanced myelin MRI could be an extremely valuable tool to see inside the spinal cord and measure myelin loss for doctors, for clinical trials, and for people living with spinal cord injury.